What's up team? It's your biggest fan, the real Casadero, and this here is the first part in a series of videos that I that are coming from me producing a course for my website, the Code365 Startup Lab. And the name of this course is HTML Mastery. And my goal is to have this done fairly quickly soon and be able to give people a master level understanding of, of HTML and a core foundation that they can build on when it comes to building websites, web applications, and, and writing programs in general, team. This is the education that I didn't get. Um, I think it's the education that everybody needs. And most importantly, it shows people that, hey, you don't have to go out and learn this super complicated stuff. The stuff that, that you, you can use this stuff right now to go out, build your own website, build your own app, start your own business, go out and get freelance clients. You can use this knowledge to get a job. The whole goal is to show you how to think through, through problems and think about how the web and software and applications are put together so you can take full advantage of what's out here, team. And you're not locked into some sort of box. You're not locked into some sort of framework. You're not locked into some sort of tutorial, but you're actually able to go out and build things, team. So let's get to it. If this content is valuable when you reach the end, please like, share, subscribe to the video, team. And if you want to support the channel, Go over to Code365StartupLab.com. You can get any of the courses there, team. And whenever you sign up, you'll get some regular emails from me. You'll also get a link to the Discord server. And if you sign up for a lifetime membership team, that would be fantastic. Because it goes to help me produce more content just like this. But again, I need your input so I know what's working, what's not working, team. And also, you can follow me over on Twitter, on social media. And if you want some cool swag and merch for coders, check out Write Code, Drink Coffee. Dot com. That's enough of me plugging myself, team. This is all about you. Let's go learn some code. All right, team. If you're gonna, if you want to follow along, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a few pieces of software. One of these pieces of software you can go out and you can. I'm, I'm actually gonna show you how to go out and grab it, but uh, it, later on in the video. But I'm gonna show you here as well. Um, I'm gonna be using PowerShell, and I use. Uh, if you're on a Windows machine, PowerShell comes with the computer, but you can also go download what's called PowerShell Core, and it's just on their GitHub page. So you go over to GitHub PowerShell Core, and if you will maximize it, if you scroll, if you scroll down, they have instructions on how to install it for your particular operating system. And so, like I use Windows, and I, I'll give you a quick, just a, a quick intro to how Windows works. So at Windows 64-bit, if your operating system has four gigs of RAM or more, this is 64-bit operating system. And what this 64 bits mean is just the the way the operating system stores data and it allocates memory when something is loaded into memory it loads it in the 64-bit segments and so you're able to load more stuff into memory and it help and and because the chunks are bigger the operating system is able to manage essentially more memory space um, windows x86 is for four gigs or less and that's you that's like a 32-bit system and so that means you've got 32 bits of space and and if you do the math, right, like so if you got a whole bunch of RAM and you're using 32 bits, then the computer has more addresses to manage. But if you have the 64 bit spaces, then the computer doesn't have these additional addresses to manage. Man. So that's just a little bit of computer knowledge for you. So, again, if you got four gigs of RAM or less, you're going to use Windows uh, 86. And if you got four gigs of RAM or more, but, you know, this is typically most systems today, um, especially if you just if you j if you're on a Windows 10 machine that you just got, you're probably Windows 64 team. You just head over into the instructions and they will walk you through how to download and install everything team. I know it's a headache. I know it's not, you know, it, the idea situation for a lot of people. But if you're coming out here to learn this stuff, this is the kind of stuff you're going to encounter and you're going to be reading this kind of stuff anyway. So you might as well just go out and use it for yourself instead of reading it so you can go apply it to somebody else's business and, and help them grow and create the life that they want. Right. To spend your time struggling and scratching your head and, 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 and struggling through this stuff so you can build your own thing and just own your own stuff, team. All right. The next thing we're going to need is uh, you're going to need a program called Visual Studio Code. And if we just type it here, I'm using Bing and I'm on Microsoft Edge on Windows. Uh, Visual Studio Code, the website is code.visualstudio.com. And this this is just one of many text editors. This is the text editor I use. It's the text editor that I'm going to be using throughout this. But I've also used other text editors in the past. Um, there's Sublime Text. There's Brackets. There's all kinds of text editors, team. This is just the one that I use. It's made by Microsoft. It's, it's well-backed, and it has a ton of extensions and plugins to make coding easier. And also the keyboard shortcuts are fantastic. There's a bunch of things you can do, team. And so if you want to follow along, I recommend Visual Studio Code because the, you'll be able to use the exact same commands 
and shortcuts that I'm using. And it's going to and, and you're going to learn. You're going to learn to really use this tool to build uh, your own type of stuff, team. And I don't know if I get into it inside of this course uh, per se, but not not in this not not in the course. I get into it in the course, but I'm not sure if I used it in these lessons that you're about to watch. But there's a program called Git, and you can get there by using Git slash Git dash SCM dot com. And this is what's called a version control tracking system. And this allows us to track different versions of our software as we build through them. I don't really want to dig deep into it and start explaining all this stuff right here. But if you head over to the website, you can just read through the website. And I'm telling you, team, this is how you gain the best understanding, the very best understanding of all this stuff. But download, install, Git if you want to follow along with that. And last but not least, I'm going to open up another tab by hitting Control T. There's a program called XAMP, and we're going to be using that to give us local server capabilities on our machine. So if we go here, uh, this isn't what we're looking for. We're going to go back one and we go into the uh, the XAMP installer. And the web page is actually www.apache, that's A-P-A-C-H-E, friends, F-R-I-N-D-S, dot org team. And uh, this is just a program we download onto our computer and we can install it. And it gives us a web server, just like we'd have a web server on the internet. It gives us a database that we can use. It gives us the PHP programming language, which team is, is, it's a programming language, but think of this as a, a server side scripting language that we can use to process any sort of request that we send to a web server. Normally, like when we came to this website, we typed in this address. What happened is, is we sent a request to a web server at this address and that web server said, Hey, they're looking for the index.html and they sent it back to us. Now, what we don't see on the back end is this probably a PHP page. It's probably a PHP application, and PHP just returns HTML. So it'll go into the database. It'll grab all the stuff that the user is looking for, and it will make it an HTML file, and it'll send it back to the browser, and that's what we see, team. This is what websites do. All of them, the, the general theory behind all of them, whether you're using an Angular or a React or a Vue or whatever, it's all the same thing. I'm just showing you PHP because PHP you can start with that immediately and you'll have this foundational knowledge you can build on. If you ever ran across somebody who seemed like a genius coder, there's it, either they study really hard, but there's a very good chance that they started very simple and just started building little HTML pages. And then they were like, ah, you know, they added some JavaScript. I mean, they added some CSS. Then they added some JavaScript and then they're like, hey, right, I want to put this on the Internet. I want people to be able to log in. And then they learned PHP. And from there, it's off to the races, team. You understand two, three different programming languages. You understand the structure and architecture of things. You understand how to think through different problem sets. And now you're able to go out and start building. And that's how you end up with these companies like Snapchats and Ubers and Facebooks and all this different stuff, team. It's just people with different ideas out there building. But anyway, this is some software we can download to our machine. And when we get to that portion, I'm going to show you, I'm going to go over the download again so you can skip that part, but I'm going to show you how to get it set up and get it running so you can run a local web server. And, and, and that's, that's pretty much t it team. So if you want to follow along, this is all the stuff you're going to need here team. And that should be good. So let's get into it team. Let's start building some stuff. All right, team. Welcome back. It's your biggest fan, the real Casadero, and we are going to get into HTML forms so let's do it we're going to hit the windows key and type in power p w for powershell core I'm gonna make this a little smaller and zoom in so you guys can see all right so we're good so what we're going to do actually we're going to do this uh a little different we're going to do a cd then we're going to do a tilde key uh backslash and then we're going to type des and type tab and that is going to take us to the desktop now we're on the, now we're on the desktop we're going to do a mkdir and we're going to call this form example dot html well actually we're making this a directory so we'll just do this and we'll go form and we'll make this capital e back like that and then we'll do a cd form now we're in that directory and we'll do a new dash item and we'll call this index.html, HTML, enter. Then we'll do a code dot to open this directory in Visual Studio Code. So look, we get all these code windows open. Uh, yes, I want to save that. And this is what we're looking for right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put this off to the left side. And then we're going to hit the go live right away, bring up the go live. And we're going to put that off to the right side right here. 
actually let me put this back up there grab this there we go team okay so now we got our web page we'll go over here to visual studio code do a control w to close that window go into our index.html put an exclamation point hit tab and down we'll hit tab a few more times and down here in documents we're going to put form example form example all right so we got a basic web page right here team we're just going to make an example of a standard input form and forms are where we first start to get into programming this is our foray into programming so like i said like i always say with html you can start and you can start building stuff right away you can start building anything you want you can put it out there on the internet you can have people come and see it you can build little stores for products and merchandise you can build an online course you can build whatever you want build your landing page put it on there but then at some point you're going to want to get input from users you may want to get a username and password so they can log in so you can serve up a, a, a back end to a membership website or so they can download something you may want to put in a form so they could give you their information so they could buy something this is this is what forms are used for team forms are to get input from programs so let's so let's get into it we're going to make an example form so we're going to go right down here into our body and we're just going to type a form tab and then it's going to ask us for an action and then this action what we would do is we would say what where we want that form to go and what we want it to do so in this case we're going to make it go to a action tion underscore page dot php so this is going to go point to a php file and then we're going to go in here and we're going to move this form down inside of our form we're going to put all the stuff we need so we need a first we go first name and then after that first name we're going to put a br and this is going to create what's called a line break and then under that we're going to put a, a input field so we go input i n p and then hit tab the type is going to be text because we're going to be putting a, a string in here so a first name and this name will just give it first name and then this id will give it a value of m-i-c-k-e-y emmy mickey and then under that we're going to put another b-i-r so we'll go uh not b-i-r but b-r to add another line break and then what we'll do is we'll just copy this so we'll grab this first name all the way down to there we'll hold the alt and the shift key and we'll go down and now we've got this area where we can make our last name all right so we'll go here space and then we'll get rid of this first go down here and we'll type we'll make this last name so we'll take this out and we'll go last and last name is going to be m-o-u-s-e mickey mouse all right team so now we've got a pretty standard form let's add another line break right here and then underneath that we're going to put an input type and we're going to make actually i'm sorry a team we're going to do a input we're going to make this type a submit so it shows up as a button and we're going to give this a value of submit so we'll go value is equal to submit and then we'll just get rid of all this other stuff t submit and we'll go we'll save and now we got nothing over here let's see what's going on how come we don't see this let's close out our live server bring our live server back and there we go we have a pretty standard html form now what would happen is we submit this button and it would go off and it would get this action php page but because we don't have an action php page and we are not on a web server that has php on the back end it gives us this cannot get action page but if we had this set up the way it was supposed to be set up we could get cat we could get back any kind of input we want so we could have this page sitting on the server and the server could be sitting and it could be waiting and it can say hey when you get a request with this username and this password show them this page and then from that point on that that user they would be able to use that page to do all kinds of stuff on the back end but if they weren't logged in they wouldn't be able to see that page and so that's why we have passwords and passwords composed of input fields all forms input fields credit card input field right we want to buy something online sign up for amazon netflix they all want input field so this means we know how we must know how to design and create forms team 
So in the next video, we are going to go deeper into forms. But now you know how to make a basic form. You know how to make it point to something. But you don't know any PHP yet. You don't know any programming yet. We're going to get to all that stuff, team. But before we get there, we're going to make sure we got HTML locked down. We're going to make sure we understand everything that's going on here before we move on, team. All right, I will see you guys in the next video.